There are a lot of feel-good stories about the Windows 10 Fall Creators update providing huge performance gains on various system configurations. We're here to ruin that for you. We isolated variables to target just one component, the CPU, and focused solely on the R7-1700 to see if the reported uplift on Ryzen platforms was due to GPU or CPU-bound testing. As always, you can't just take this data and scream that the FCU caused huge gains or no gains or the opposite. You've got to take the whole picture into account, and with many GPU-bound tests out there, we figured we'd run a CPU-bound test to try and pinpoint performance uplift and look at the other side of the spectrum. Before getting to that, this video is brought to you by Synergy, the software that lets you share a keyboard and mouse between multiple systems. If you have limited desk space and multiple computers to command, Synergy removes the need for separate peripherals or a KVM and works as an over-the-network software. Use our link below to get 50% off the home or pro version with SSL. We're aware that some users and other outlets are reporting performance uplift with FCU or Fall Creators Update, but we have to highlight that a lot of these benchmarks were conducted with Vega 56, and that has two factors playing towards the performance uplift. One of them is that it seems like Vega may have had some specific optimizations, and the other one is that just GPUs in general seem to have improved with FCU. We're focusing on the CPU side to see if there's any uplift there, but on the GPU side, uh, we've received multiple reports from our trusted user base in the Patreon Discord that, for example, G-Sync and FreeSync stability in terms of frame times have both improved, and both of those are GPU-specific items. Uh, we've also heard reports that Vega specifically has seen improvement, haven't looked into its competing 1070 yet, but uh, it definitely, it's become a bit clear that there is GPU uplift with, up, with FCU to some extent, and some of that is on frame time stability, and some of it's just overall and general uplift. But uh, what isn't fully clear is how much of that uplift comes down to the CPU. So we're isolating for the CPU here, and we're using a 1080 Ti FTW3 to do that. And as usual, our testing can only represent our testing, of course. So rather than jump to the charts and then scream about the results being end-all, be-all, keep in mind that we're only testing the 1700 and the 1080 Ti FTW3. We can't yet speak for results of Vega cards or Intel CPUs. Vega uplift, again, could be either from specific optimizations or just GPU performance uplift in general in the drivers. Testing is conducted in an A-B fashion, so we have some older data. It's not that old, it's from the same preceding creator's update build that we're using to test here versus FCU. But when I say older, I mean like tested a week ago as opposed to yesterday. We have some of that. We have some A-B tests where we ran CU versus FCU in the last 24 hours from filming this and that provides a pretty good look at the performance uplift if there is any. We're focusing only on 1080p today, eliminated the usual 1440p testing because it just wasn't necessary. As a side note, we have been working with Shadow of War for the past few days, trying to get GPU benchmarks up for it, and we looked at it for CPUs. Shadow of War has some of the most variable performance we've seen to date. Haven't fully pinpointed why that is just yet, but basically the, you could run a set of four tests and see an average of maybe, for example, 20 FPS at an unspecified setting and with an unspecified GPU. But you might see 30 FPS in one test and then 20 in the next set of four tests, and then you're back up to 33 in the next set of four tests. So it's kind of all over the place in performance with the built-in benchmark, and we don't really trust it yet. So we've eliminated it from this CPU comparison for today, and we're focusing on the normal CPU suite instead. Starting with Ashes of the Singularity at 1080p, we measured the CU 1703.608 build, the previous one, at 40.2 FPS average, with 1% lows at 31.6 and 0.1% lows at 30 FPS. The FCU, Fall Creators Update, test planted the R7-1700 stock CPU at 40.3 FPS average with lows at 32.31% and 29.8, 0.1%. This is within standard deviation, which we measured at 0.5 FPS for average and also 1%, or 1.5 FPS for 0.1% lows. We were not able to discern an appreciable performance change between CU and FCU in Ashes of the Singularity, with data plotting the difference as within error and test variance. Here's a frame time plot between the two just to show the differences in ashes of the singularity at 1080p high. As you can see, they are fairly consistent. What you're really looking for is more consistency and ideally a number lower on the scale rather than higher for frame times. Total War Warhammer at 1080p is next. 
For this test, our original R7-1700 CPU plotted an average FPS of 128, with lows at 65.7 and 60. The FCU test had us at 127.6 FPS average, with a 65.31% and 59.50.1% low. Enabling game mode in FCU plotted 128.4 FPS average, 67 and 61.6 .6 for the lows, and these results are all within standard deviation of each other, which we've plotted as 1.9 FPS average in this particular game, 1.3 for the 1% values, and 2.3 FPS for the 0.1% values, where we start losing some test resolution. Again, we can't determine statistically significant changes in performance from these numbers. Total War Warhammer was run more than 10 times for each of these, and it was the title we spent the most effort on as it was the first one we tried after the update. One outlier result was tossed from each test batch, but overall the results basically point that there's no real change here. Watch Dogs 2 plotted the CU R7-1700 test at 87.7 FPS average when retested yesterday, so this is a different batch of tests than our CPU review batch, with a 1% low at 67.3 and 0.1% lows at 54. The FCU test had us at 88 FPS average, and game mode also had us at 88 FPS average. Standard deviation in this one is about 0.9 FPS average, with lows deviating by about 1.2 and 1.5 FPS respectively. Project Cars 2 at 1080p is next and plots our 1700 stock CPU from the creator's update previous version of Windows at 78.5 FPS average, with lows at 62.5 and 58.5. FCU had us at 79.5, with lows at 62.8 and 56.8. Standard deviation is about 0.6 FPS average, 0.71% lows, and 2.6 FPS, 0.1% lows. Civilization 6 turn time completion is measured in seconds, not FPS. Average FPS actually increases in Civilization with worse CPUs for the AI benchmark because more time is spent with the screen unmoving and static, whereas faster CPUs process turns faster, and so the screen experiences more dynamism and therefore a lower frame rate. The turn time completion for the R7-1700 with Creator's Update was 20.95 seconds, with FCU at 21.02 seconds. That's within error and variance, and we're within 0.07 seconds of each other. GTA 5 is last at 1080p. We're at 95 FPS average for the original test with creator's update, 66.3 for 1% and 63 for 0.1%. FCU plots us at 96.3 FPS, 66.3 FPS 1% lows, and 61.7 0.1% lows. Again, this is within error. The frame time plot doesn't show much difference between the two runs, once again, and demonstrates that frame time consistency is largely unchanged in our R7-1700 CPU bound testing. Now again, before people start just jumping to the charts and posting, well, I guess they've probably already done that, but hopefully when you encounter people who just skip to the charts and ignore the entire thing at the beginning talking about to what extent our test is applicable, uh, what this tells you is not that you can't or won't see performance uploads with Fall Creators Update. Certainly people have. It's that with our test configuration, an R7-1700 stock on an ASUS Crosshair Hero 6 motherboard with 3200MHz CL16 memory, and uh, most importantly with a 1080 Ti FTW3, we're not really seeing a change in these games. There might be other games where we could see a change, but more likely we would see a change with Vega or just with a lower end GPU, like a 1070 relative to the 1080 Ti, it would be lower end. So that would be the, the next thing to look at would be basically GPU testing, not just CPU testing, but on the CPU side when left unconstrained by the GPU and with an NVIDIA GPU, which is another important factor to, to consider, there is really no performance change from one to the other. It is possible, once again, just to reiterate, that you would see a performance change if we stuck a Vega GPU in there for one of two reasons. One, maybe because of an AMD driver thing that plays better with FCU, and two, just because Vega is probably going to be more GPU bound in some scenarios than others, than a 1080 Ti, for example. So yeah, uh, with this configuration, we're not seeing a change. Maybe with others, we'll look into it. We do know, however, uh, with relative certainty that there is improvement in FCU for frame time consistency for users with G-Sync and FreeSync. From what we've seen and heard, it looks like 
those two technologies have tightened up their consistency with frame times with FCU. So in the very least, that's changed. But if you're strictly looking at a CPU scenario, for our test, it doesn't look like there's a change. If you find a game where there is one, let us know. But that's all for now. As always, patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up a shirt like this one, the anniversary edition teardown shirt, and subscribe for more. I'll see you all next time.